Hi friends, we have taken an initiative to create correlative medical videos with radiopath correlations in this series that we do on Dams Daily channel on YouTube. This is available under the hashtag radiopath hashtag Dams series or you can actually follow off playlist on YouTube Dams Daily channel which is radiopath series. Today we are going to discuss a very interesting liver pathology called as focal nodular hyperplasia and I'll be looking at the radiological perspective and Diksha will be talking about the pathologist overview over this disease. We'll try to give you an overview and how and show you how this disease correlates on both radiological images and pathological images. Now before I start with this I want to give you the background of this patient. This patient was a young female who had an incidental liver lesion on ultrasound and was sent to us to CT to evaluate the patient further. Okay, This is the background. And this is usually the background in these lesions. These lesions are incidentally detected usually. And they are they're pretty common vascular lesions but not as common as hemangiomas would be. So as a radiologist this is what, is what I have in my mind when I am looking at a CT. And there is an incidental ultrasound liver mass, liver lesion in a young woman. So I am thinking of is it hemangioma, is it uh, focal nodular hyperplasia, is it uh, hepatic adenoma, is it uh, HCC which is more sinister. So let us look at the CT image in front of you. When you look at the CT image, what do you think? What is it? Why there are three images? Because this is a triple phase CT of the liver. The first image that you see here is the arterial phase, hepatic arterial phase, which has been done after maybe around 25-35 seconds. Look at the aorta. Can you identify now? Aorta is so white because this is arterial phase. The second image is the portal venous phase. Look at how the dye has gone from the artery is seen more in the veins. Third is the delayed phase or the parenchymal phase which you can identify by looking at the blood vessels. Now, so what are the characteristics of the lesion? You can see a well demarcated lesion but there is no evident capsule, there is no calcification. A well demarcated lesion in the liver which has a well defined central scar. Can you see a central scar with fibrous septae going into the lesion like this? Okay, this is very typical of a disease that we are going to talk about. The lesion has now become isodense to the liver in portal venous phase but you can still appreciate the central scar. And when I see the delayed scan, the lesion is again isodense to the liver in the delayed scan as well but the scar has now become hyperdense, it has become hyperadenuting, it is enhancing, the fibrous scar is enhancing in the delayed phase. These are the typical characteristics of uh, FNH on a triple phase CT. And I want to remind you and we have done a CT, uh, we have done a video on hemangioma in the past. If you look at the Dams Daily channel, you will see a video on liver hemangioma where I have described the CT findings of liver hemangioma. Liver hemangioma should show a peripheral nodular enhancement in the arterial phase with delayed centripetal fill-in. Okay, this is how we know this is not a hemangioma. Now, why this is not a fibrolamellar HCC? The background liver is normal. And the background liver would be normal in even in FLSCC because that is usually seen in non cirrhotic patients. So even that would have a central scar. So why this is not FLSCC? Because of no calcification, that is one of the key things to remember. Uh, Fibrolamellar SCC usually would have calcification and you may even see lymphadenopathy. That, that are the features that would help you to differentiate it from uh, FNH. And adenoma on the other hand would not have a scar, may have a pseudofibrous capsule and adenomas are more likely to bleed. So you may see associated subcapsular hematoma or you may see fat uh, deposition, you may see fatty adenosion on a CT scan. This is how we differentiate these lesions. Okay. Now with this background, I also want you to know and I am sure Diksha is also going to talk about this when she talks about the pathology. These lesions are rich in Kupfer cells. Now what happens is when we do a technetium sulfur colloid scan, which is taken up by the reticular endothelial system, which is taken up by the macrophages, taken up by the kuffer cells, these lesions show high uptake. Can you see? This is how you see high uptake on technetium sulfur colloid scan in a lesion called as FNH. So these are the radiological characteristics and the differential diagnosis of FNH. Now I hand over to Diksha to talk about the pathological aspect. So now when we look at this gross specimen, uh, you can very clearly see that there is a well demarcated lesion here but there is no capsule and this is the normal liver. 
so we can appreciate the difference in the color between the two now in this well demarcated lesion right in the center there is a white central stellate scar which is throwing off these fibrous septae into the lesion which is what we saw in radiology yeah. it's actually very same very similar very almost similar. the same lesion and if we look at a, a more fixed specimen we are able to identify how it the fibrous septae has split it into nodules and this is why we call it focal nodular hyperplasia because this is not a neoplastic process this is a non neoplastic process it's a polyclonal regenerative hyperplastic response to a pre existing malformation or some kind of vascular injury does it have a malignant potential is there is no malignant there is no potential. malignant potential it's it is not malignant it is non uh, do not touch lesion do not touch lesion yes. should not be touched now on microscopy we see that in the center there is a fibrous septa and the septa has lots of these small small blue dots these are all lymphocytes so there is a very dense inflammatory response and in the center you can see marked in black vessels and on the side you can see marked in red a ductular proliferation which is very characteristic of fnh on either side you can see hepatocyte proliferation but it's not as much as you would expect in a neoplastic process and on ihc we have a uh, on uh, another section we can see a very thick wall blood vessel which tells us how it could be there is also a vascular vascularity to it and it's usually in the central scar and on ihc we do a stain called glutamine synthetase which gives us which is normally seen in zone 3 of the hepatocytes normally so it has a very focal a uh, staining in a normal liver but here in fnh we see something called map like areas in the ihc and here we have summarized all the three important uh, differential diagnoses for you so as we can see fnh has a capsule which is not uh, does not have a capsule which is present in the other two central scar very characteristic of fnh yeah, we saw the same thing in radiology radiology well. and, and hemorrhage and steatosis exactly. is more in the adenoma adenoma and kupfer cells as sir said fnh so FNH. that was the reason for the subfocoloid scan exactly. showing high uptake and mitosis are seen mostly in fibrolamellar carcinoma because it's a more proliferative lesion since it's a neoplastic condition and when we talk about clonality the fact that fnh is a non neoplastic condition is shown to us by polyclonality whereas adenoma and fibrolamellar carcinoma are monoclonal conditions as far as pathogenesis goes there's a very interesting point which we came across w about the oral contraceptive right. use so, so fnh is fnh does not have a causative uh, relation yes. with so OCPs. adenoma has a causative relationship with oral or contraceptives while fnh is not caused by oral contraceptives in fact But a patient who has yes. uh, fnh if if she is on uh, ocps the size tends to be more than what would have been in another patient so fnh responds to estrogen and it grows but it is not caused by oral contraceptive that is very important it is this is how we while adenomas the incidence of adenomas in the world has actually gone up grown after 1960s when the oral contraceptives were introduced so adenomas are actually characteristically associated with oral contraceptive right. use while fnh is not causatively associated exactly. with oral contraceptive that is the point that we wanted to put across to you so with these background let's now the idea that we had was that we wanted to show you a a joint picture like which we don't see in a medical school we wanted to show you how radiology and pathology are actually integrated where you can look at a morphology and you can predict how it would look like on a ct scan and you can learn it together so that is our endeavor through this kind of integrated videos at dams we strongly believe in integrated approach to medicine and i believe that is the approach that you should have if you want to do well in a central exam in india that is our you know uh, firm commitment to you now if you like this video please go back and you know send us a message drop me a message drop diksha message we love to hear back from you and it actually gives us more motivation to work harder and make more such education videos for you do follow us on dam series channel on youtube for more such videos keep listening to us for more such educational videos and keep motivating us thank you very much thank you